What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to polish aluminum. So guys, I'm not big into polishing aluminum and metal. I don't have a call for it here in my detailing business, but I do have aluminum on my trailer. So the diamond plate in the front and the V-nose and also the fenders that go over the wheels are aluminum and they have really oxidized, they've faded out, and I really need to clean them and polish them to make them look nice again. So the products I'm going to use are from Renegade. So Renegade makes a line, an entire detailing line, but I got these products from Car Supplies Warehouse. So if you do want to pick up some really good metal and aluminum polishing products, then check out Car Supplies Warehouse. They have the entire line there from compounds and polishes and wheels that you can polish huge semis like Jason here. Or if you're just doing smaller jobs like chrome tailpipes or aluminum like this on a trailer or on a camper, these products are gonna be perfect. So here are the products that we used. This is their Pro Line Heavy Cut Compound for aluminum. Now, all types of aluminum. We have our diamond plate aluminum here, and then we have the little fender caps over here. We also have their Rebel Metal Polish, which is basically like this, but not the pro level, a little bit of a finer cut. And then we have their Pipe Dream, which is a chrome polish and conditioner. So between these three, along with a couple of different polishers and pads, we're going to shine up this aluminum. Now you can already see the difference. Do you see this here compared to this over here? You can tell this is way glossier, way nicer looking. And then over here, it's faded and oxidized, not looking that great. So what we did here is we used our little mini rotary polisher with a little wool pad. This provides some great cut. And then we just used an orange foam pad to polish. Now you can see they turn black. It's true aluminum. It's uncoated, not clear coated. So when you compound it and polish it, it's going to leave your pads looking like this. And you can wash them out, but it will stain your pads. A good idea also is to wear gloves and a mask because this will produce a dust and it's pretty messy. So wear gloves and get grungier towels. Don't use nice towels for aluminum because they're gonna get black and grungy and they will not clean up. So let's look at the fender. And I polished down here a little bit, but I didn't go all the way. We're gonna see how glossy we can really get this. If we can shine it up like chrome, I'm not sure because the texture on it is a little different, but we'll see. As long as we can shine it up like that on the entire thing, that would be amazing. Now we also have some aluminum trim around the doors. These we can hit by hand and we'll see if we can clean these up a little bit as well. So what we're gonna do first is work on this diamond plate here. So we're gonna show you guys how we're gonna polish it. Now there's a couple of different things you wanna keep in mind and a couple of different options. You can do a lot of this by hand. So I'm gonna show you how you can use these by hand and the results you can get. Because you will need to get into these smaller areas by hand. You can't use the machine in there for obvious reasons. And I also have my little Rupes Bigfoot Mini, and I'm gonna use this also to see what results we can get. So if you do have a little rotary or a large rotary, doesn't matter. This one is from SPTA, and I do have the little extension rods on here. I have them that go all the way, I don't know, to about six inches or so for the extension rods. And it is nice to do that because you have a little better control uh, with this, especially getting around the tighter areas. But again, it's rotary, a little bit of different action. It cuts more, it heats up more. So we'll show the difference between using this machine and a DA machine or see if there is a difference. So let's get started on the diamond plate. We're gonna do this small section here. So I am going to use the Rebel Pro Red, the metal polish heavy cut. So shake this up. I'm gonna apply it's pretty runny, so be careful with it. I'm gonna apply a little bit on here, not too much, because this does tend to sling also, so remember that. At least it's good, everybody has masks, so just put it on when doing aluminum polishing. 
just spread it on without the machine on. Again, remember rotary, it's gonna cause a little bit of sling. So don't overload the pad. Now I worked on this at speed one. I don't need to go any higher. Already made a huge improvement. And if you do have some scratches on here, it will work them out. Maybe not deep, deep scratches, but all right. Already that's looking good and that's just the cutting face. So I'm gonna go in by hand, put some on a used applicator. Again, I have plenty of these. Spread it out on here and get into these smaller areas. And remember to stay away from rubber trim, anything that's delicate, because especially your polisher will tear it up. You can already tell, look how nasty the towel looks. That's looking really good. So you can already tell the difference. This is still really glossy. This has been cut. You can see that it's cleaned up, but still a little bit hazy. And then this is untouched. So let's cut the entire piece here and then we'll polish. Now I'm gonna switch over to my DA just because it's a little easier to handle. And let's see if it can produce the same results. So you notice I went a lot faster with this because again, it's DA, it's not going to cause a lot of sling and it's a little bit easier to handle. Does it get the same results? Oh yeah, maybe even better. If you're used to a rotary, then you can use a rotary, completely fine. I'm used to DAs and this looks incredible. What a difference. So. This was cut, this was cut. It seems like the finish is better. And then untouched. Man, what a difference. If we didn't have the little diamond plates here, this would just look like a mirror. Incredible. All right, let's keep going. If you do have a blower, you can blow this out because it is going to build up for now. It's okay, I'm gonna continue going but it would be ideal to blow this out in an area where it's going to be safe. Into a five gallon bucket, spraying the sides down like I do for compounding sometimes. That way you don't have all that dust in the air. You don't want that aluminum oxide dust in the air. So as you see, this smudge here, this is not usual because it comes off the, the painted aluminum just fine. This is the silicone bead that was run across here, smudged up onto here. You didn't see it because it was white. So I'm gonna use a little bit of moonshine, a little bit of alcohol. The thing is the silicone needs to be rubbed off. The residue is attached to the silicone. It will come off. It just needs to be compounded off, but it's, it was down here too. I noticed it. So if you just use a little bit of a compound, it will remove that. That's not a big deal. You can probably even go back over this edge with a regular pad and compound and it'll be fine. So that's not a big deal, but that's looking really good. And if you're having a little bit of a problem removing some of the residue, just use a spritz of detailer. I'm using Paint Gloss Showroom Spray and Shine from p and S. P and S. So some guys are like, oh yeah, I use P&S products. 
And like, no, 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 no. P and S. Enunciate. <laughs> if you don't enunciate, YouTube kind of uh, abuses that privilege. All right, now I'm going to polish all of this with just an orange pad. Grab kind of a crappy orange pad here, and I'm going to use their Pipe Dream, and this will be more of a finer cut polish. Oh, whoops. I didn't shake it. Ah, oh, that's nice. I didn't go full speed. It was only about two and a half. Clean side of the micro. That comes off much easier. Ooh, that looks nice. Gorgeous. That looks like brand new diamond plate. Got that edge all nice and shiny. Down here, though, is a lot of stone chips, so that's like road rash. Because this does have protection in it. It does have like some sort of a sealant, but you can always add on. Yeah, so it does have a polymer barrier, a triple polyer, polymer barrier. So whatever that type of protection is, you will have protection. It will bead, but you can add your own. You can put any sealant on here. We do have metal coatings from Dr. Beasley's you can put on here. Or you can do an isopropyl wipe down, an IPA wipe down and then just apply any ceramic coating onto here and you'll be fine. All right, guys, that is it. Look how nice and glossy and shiny. So down here, there's a lot of pitting, stone chips, because of course, the diamond plate, this is at the V-nose and the tires will road rash this area. I even have big stone chips here and here, so it gets peppered and down here especially. But besides that, look how nice Wow, nice and glossy, nice mirror shine. It really does improve the look. Now, as you can see here, it's just a trailer. Here's a silicone bead of caulking that they put here and they were very sloppy anyway. So it smudges up here, it smudges up here. So it's a trailer, it's not that big of a deal. If you want, you can go through with some compound and you can rub that out. It's not that big of a deal. So even the little screws here and the little edges, they shined up really nice. All right, let's move on to the fenders. So here's the fender. And now we already washed the trailer. So that is already done. And this again gets peppered up with stone chips and road rash and all of that. However, you can see the difference already. I started polishing down here, looks way better. And then it's all faded and oxidized up here. So let's cut with the Heavy Cut Pro, the Rebel Red Pro. And let's see, we'll stop about here. That way we can see a clear distinction. And I'm gonna use the little wool pad again. You can use whatever pads you want. Even probably a microfiber would work. That was probably a little bit too much. I don't need that much, but that's all right. I'll spread it out. Ooh, that is messy. That looks nice. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> Could you grab me, I think my yellow tape. I have yellow tape. I'm gonna tape off this because I have to get kind of close to it. So guys, first initial cut. Look how much gloss came back. You can see the distinct line here. The edges look really nice, how it reflects that light. Makes a big difference. So what I am gonna do is tape these edges because I need to get kind of close and I bet it's gonna really mark this up. So I'm gonna tape those edges off, but huge improvement already. Now I could probably go a little bit faster. Here's like a little gouge in the metal. I could probably go a little bit faster, bump up the speed and see if I can get a better cut out of it. I can feel the difference already. So. Let's tape up the edges and go a little bit more aggressive. Don't care. I wonder if this pad probably needs to be cleaned out. Here's a way of cleaning a pad. There. That gets most of the gunk out of it.
So you can see I'm treating it just like paint pretty much, even following the polishing pattern like paint. And it's looking better. But I don't think it's going to shine up like chrome necessarily. It's not the same, I don't know, it doesn't have the same texture to it when you look close. It has like a, almost like a grain to it. Yeah, so might be a different type of aluminum or, I don't know, it's different. It's not like a perfectly flat, nice aluminum. Which you could probably grind that texture out. I'm sure you could. But I may not go that far. So I'm going to keep going all the way up here. better. <clears throat> I'm go in by hand and attack these corners. Wow. Oh yeah. That made a big difference. I'm going to use the Rebel Red Metal Polish, the Show Shine. And I started to separate a little bit. Yep, it is really, really, really shiny. These little bits look nice. Wow, that is a huge difference. So, it's not super crisp and clear like Chrome would be, but if you really look closely, you can see a texture in there. So I'm sure you could grind that even more, because aluminum, you can just keep on going and going. But for purposes like this, I'm not gonna go crazy. I just need to shine it up protect it. It does look like chrome here though. The edges look really nice, but you can see it, it definitely has its, its imperfections. But what a huge difference from that, kind of that dull, dead look to that, where it looks new again. Pretty awesome. And even the little chrome bits here, you can get in here by hand and clean it out. That actually responded really nice. So those little bits are all shined up also. So the aluminum wheel fenders look incredible. Wow, that cleaned up really well. Now, you can also use them on the little aluminum trim here. So I just hand polished these and look how nice they look. So I went up to here and you can see nice and clean and glossy and shiny and then it gets dull. So these can all be done by hand. It does not take much at all. Let me show you. So all you need to do is take a little bit of the Rebel Red Show Shine. You can also do this with the Chrome Polish, but this has a little bit more cut. And then you butterfly it and use the point of your finger to really pinpoint where you want the polish to go. So let's polish this area. I actually just polished this area here. So Let's go down here and just show you how easy it is to use. And you can do this trimming as well. It's a little bit more difficult here because you do have the little screws, but that's okay. It can be done. And then just take your towel. and clean off the residue. And if you do get any on the paint, it's not a big deal. A little bit of quick detailer, clean side of the towel, and it'll wipe off. But look what a difference it makes, cleaning up the aluminum trim around the doors. Makes it look brand new again. Awesome. Now what can we do about the locks here? Let's see, I'm gonna take the Rebel Red again, just a little bit, oops, that's a lot of it. Butterfly it and just work it into the metal.
Now you can probably use some steel wool in this, but you know, you do what you need to do to polish different metals. Will it make a difference? Yeah, it does. It cleans it up. Look at that. Not bad at all. It shines it up. All right. So this will definitely take some work to get all of the aluminum trim nice and shiny again, but what a difference it makes. It makes the trailer look new again. So all the diamond plate in the front has been polished. It looks so good. Now I just polished that side and you can see the difference between that side and this side. See how faded it looks compared to the glossy side. Looks really nice. Big difference. I'll get to that eventually. But just looking at this side of the trailer with all the trim, that looks great. It looks new again. All right, guys. So metal polishing can be time consuming and messy, but the results speak for themselves. I'm super happy with the way this is coming out and I'm still not done. I have to do the rest of the trailer, the other side of the diamond plate, the other fender, the back doors, all the little aluminum trim, but that goes pretty fast. Even just doing it by hand, it makes a big difference. And the larger panels like the diamond plate and the fenders, of course, using the machine makes a big difference and making sure that you get all of the imperfections out uh, as much as possible. It just quickens up uh, the process. But guys, if you want to get your hands on the Renegade metal polishes, check out Car Supplies Warehouse. You can pick up those uh, polishes along with the wheels if you have some really heavy duty compounding and polishing on aluminum and metal. Again, if you're working on semis with tons of aluminum and chrome and all of that, then you'll probably need to get some heavy equipment to do that. But for doing things like this, even on trailers or on vehicles that have chrome trim or tailpipes, this would work perfectly. And also when it comes to the polishers, you can simply do this with a dual action polisher. Any of your long throw or short throw DA polishers will work just fine for diamond plate and the flat aluminum here, like on the fender. And you can use any pads. Use wool pads or microfiber pads for the heavier cut. And then you can bump it down to an orange pad to polish it and refine it and really gloss it up. And I just use cheap wool and foam pads and they work really, really well. And remember too, with the towels and everything, everything is gonna get really messy. So these towels, of course, I'm not gonna use them again on anything. Just because if you wash them in the washer, all that aluminum oxide gets everywhere and potentially could stain all sorts of stuff. So I'm not even gonna worry about that at all. I'll chuck those, same with the pads, I'll chuck. And make sure to wear a mask if you want, safety goggles as well, and gloves because the aluminum oxide will stain your hands and anything it comes in contact with. As you can see, it's still up here a little bit, even though I compounded it off, I went back uh, with it and just rubbed with the towel and it got onto the silicone up here, which I hate, but I'll clean those little edges up. But it's not a big deal. Again, it's a work trailer. Even if you were doing it for a customer, be wary of the silicone here and stay away from it as much as possible. But even if you do get it up onto here, you can remove it with either light chemical or a little bit of compound on the pad and you can rub off the staining pretty easily and just make sure not to go back over it with a towel that will again stain the silicone. Ah, oh, so much better. Okay, if you're enjoying the videos and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. And check out the links below. I'll have all the stuff there listed. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.